Hi, I'm Connor Kelton from Stony Brook University. Today I'll be presenting our system, BrowseLite, a private data saving solution for the web. In this work, we'll see how we can apply entirely client-side interventions in modern web communications to save users cellular data without sacrificing their privacy. This work was done as part of my internship at Brave and is joint with researchers at Nokia Bell Labs. First off, why do we need to save users' data? And how bad can data costs from web browsing really be? Evidence from analyses in the HTTP archive suggests quite severe. What does my site cost.com compares the size of pages relative to the average limited data plan costs across various countries? Their studies show that the median web page now costs over 25 cents US to load in Canada, a statistic that is only trending upward. Dissecting these pages further through the HTTP archive reveals that approximately 50% of the data cost on pages comes from images. While these JPEGs, GIFs, PNGs, and otherwise have come to define our browsing experience, they continue to be disproportionate in their data costs compared to other conventional web objects, such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Further, they do not share the large computational dependency chains associated with these other types of resources, making them a prime target for page optimizations that do not actually break the load process of pages. With this in mind, there has been quite some efforts from the web performance community to improve the data cost of web images, which can essentially be grouped into two categories. The first is proxy-based image compression, as popularized by systems such as Google's Flywheel and Baidu's Traffic Guard. These systems operate on path using transparent HTTP proxies to save users' data. It's well known that web images are often served at resolutions far greater than the size of end user screens as they browse on smartphones. The result is that these images can be compressed, resized, and transcoded to keep the same perceptual quality on the end user's device while requiring less data to be sent over the network. Such on-path proxies intercept the image data, applying such transformations on the fly without developer effort. This, in the end, saves users' data costs before the image is transmitted over the last mile cellular link. However, the main problem with such approaches is their inability to operate on HTTPS encrypted pages which now constitute an estimated of 85% of web requests as per the HTTP archive. Thus, a second type of data saving approach has arisen in recent years, which combines URL redirection with server-side pre-rendering. This methodology, employed by data saving browsers or technologies such as Google's Web Lite, redirect the base URL for a web page through third-party services at the time of the request. These servers then request the web page on behalf of the user. After which, in addition to image reduction techniques, they apply various web page transformations, including pre-execution and removal of various JavaScripts to save users' data. However, both of these approaches suffer in terms of privacy and transparency. For one, they require data to be consumed by third parties, thus breaking end-to-end -end encryption from clients to servers. While Google and recent studies from www have shown that WebLite does not forward cookies to third-party servers, this limits data savings for sites with personalized contents. Further, as contents with computational dependencies are removed or modified, this can, and has been shown to, introduce unexpected site breakage. Our solution is thus to enact as much data savings as possible entirely from the client's web browser. Intervening on web page load process directly from the client can save users data while keeping HTTPS integrity for personalized contents. Further, our solution only focuses on web images due to their relative weight on web pages and their negligible probability of causing breakage in the page load process. We designed two such techniques to achieve such private data savings. The first is to leverage as much of the already existing infrastructure as possible to save users data. Many CDNs or even some modern web servers are already equipped with the technology to implement data saving image transformations on the fly. However, they are often either configured for quality over data size or are configured in a one-size-fits-all manner across the diverse set of devices used for web browsing. Our first approach is thus to identify the ability of an image URL to be transformed using this already available tooling. We do so by identifying and modifying URL parameters in the image, which can be used to transform it directly at request time. For our identification, we used a seed set of CDNs to generate rule-based methods for rewriting. The details of this procedure and our final set of rules can be found in our paper. However, we still apply another intervention to save users' data on images for which such technology is not available. 
Assuming only the client and server are involved in the HTTP connection, we conclude the only additional way to privately save users' data is to simply request less. This can be made possible through a part of the HTTP specification known as range requests. The range request allows arbitrary bytes of the response data to be requested instead of the full payload. The key here is that web images were designed in such a way that they can actually be rendered incrementally with only partial amounts of the data available. This was very useful in the early days of the web, when images could simply not be fetched instantaneously over limited bandwidth networks. The combination of range requests and the incremental nature of web images means that users can still see image contents with a fraction of their data cost. A natural question that follows is how do such transformations actually affect the user's quality of experience while browsing? We analyze each of our solutions in the slide. For URL rewriting, one key factor is that the client browser knows the native dimensions of the device and the space allocated on the page for the image. This means downsizing can be targeted to ensure reasonable visual quality. For example, take the following image after it is resized to a third of its width and then displayed at its original size. Of course, this appears blurry. However, when downsized to smaller mobile screens, the change is nearly imperceptible while still achieving 60% savings for this particular case. The perhaps less obvious case is how the user is affected by images that are range requested. As expected, requesting say 50% of an image contents will allow for 50% data savings, but will also only render 50% of the image pixels. This can be harmful to the user experience, cutting off certain parts of the image or making the site appear broken, as is seen here when requesting 10 to 100% of the image contents in this example page. However, to improve the user experience of range requests, we introduce a visual trick inspired by image previews of popular sites such as Quora and Facebook. We call this trick image reflection, where we take a partial image contents on the page, reflect and blur them, thereby making the page appear much less broken. To show the resulting impact on the user experience, we use the metric called the visual completeness, which is a component of the well-known speed index metric. The following graph compares the visual completeness of both pages across 10 to 100% of the image data requested. The data shows that using range requests in tandem with image reflections can save approximately 20% more data at the same desired level of visual completeness, which here is shown to be at 90%. However, there is one further aspect of modern web pages that improves the practicality of range requests data. That is, progressive encoding for JPEGs and PNGs. This technique embeds smaller, lower quality versions of these images within a single image file. This allows such images to be rendered from low to high quality instead of top to bottom. Given that many images are oversized at the server, this allows the low quality versions of these images to actually appear in high quality when they are downsized at the user's mobile device. Thus, using range requests to only gather low quality portions of these images can save users data with virtually no impact on their quality of experience. Again, Comparing the following two pages by visual completeness, we can observe that an additional 30% of data savings can be made by range requesting progressive images while keeping pages 90% visually complete. We apply these client-side image data saving techniques into a system which we call Browse Lite. Browse Lite operates directly on top of modern browsers and can be broken down into the following five steps. First, Browse Lite is implemented as a puppeteer application which hooks onto the page load process during the initial HTML request of pages. All requests for images made by the browser are forwarded to Browse Lite, where they are then run through a regular expression on the fly to automatically rewrite request URLs. Widths, qualities, and formats are edited on the fly to save users' data. Next, the image requests are transformed into range requests by appending the appropriate HTTP headers. In parallel, Browse Lite determines the locations of all images in the DOM of the web page. The metadata of the associated image is used to determine if the image needs to be reflected, and if so, partial images are transformed into reflections using the web canvas. Using this flow, Browse Lite is able to save users' data without sacrificing their privacy. To show the impact of Browse Lite in the wild, we crawled live pages with and without Browse Lite enabled and measured several factors, including the resulting data requested, visual completeness scores, and page load performances. To do so, we crawled approximately 1,000 pages across three categories of rankings from the Majestic Million. Additionally, 
The site's comprised of both landing and inner pages, which are known in the literature to exhibit inherently different structures even for the same domain. To choose how much of images were requested when applying range requests, we determined using a sample of pages from our crawls that pages on average were 90% visually complete with only 50% of the data requested. Thus, all pages in our crawls were set to range request half of the image contents. Finally, we compared the savings and user experience impact of Browse Lite to an existing state-of-the-art data saving solution in Google Web Lite. To do so, we navigated the same set of domains from our crawls directly through Google Web Lite servers. Our results also compare to other possible approaches, such as man-in-the-middle proxy methods like Flywheel. For our first result, we compared the data savings across our crawls in terms of the fraction of the page size that was saved. The following graph shows this as a CDF across all pages for four alternatives, those being man-in-the-middle proxy approaches, plain HTTP proxy approaches, Google's web light service, and browse light. We can see that for the median page, 25% of data is saved using the URL rewriting and range request components of Browse Lite. This is in comparison to 21% savings with man-in-the-middle proxies and 89% savings from Google Web Lite. While man-in-the-middle proxies do not apply range requests, they save 21% of data so they can act by compressing all image contents despite sacrificing privacy to do so. Plain HTTP proxies saw 62% less availability due to TLS and actually save no data at the median. Finally, WebLite acts as an upper bound for savings. However, it cannot transform personalized contents and introduces the potential for page breakage. Despite data savings being important for end users, the performance of web pages is paramount. We thus analyze the performance trade-off to pages by using BrowseLite. To do so, we analyze the change in the speed index metric from running the pages of our crawls with and without BrowseLite enabled, both over a Wi-Fi and 4G LTE network. The following CDF of change shows our results in milliseconds across our crawls. Here, zero indicates no change, to the right of zero represents pages that slowed down, and to the left indicates pages that actually sped up. We find that 40% of pages actually saw improved speed index values by an average of 400 milliseconds. This is due to the fact that pages actually render faster due to bandwidth being saved by requesting less image data. Further, while we found that an additional 40% of pages saw relatively imperceptible slowdowns, 20% of pages suffered by more than 500 milliseconds, which is quite perceptible. In order to understand these slowdowns, we used fine-grained timestamps to break down the possible sources of overhead from Browse Lite. From these breakdowns, we found there to be three main sources of overhead to the page load process. For brevity, we defer to our paper for the specifics, but we posit that such sources can be alleviated by a fully in-browser implementation of BrowseLite in the future. Another necessary point of evaluation for BrowseLite is how it affects caching of contents. Specifically, if range requests introduced by BrowseLite are not cacheable, it will actually hurt page performance and data savings for pages under hot connections. However, using four distinct experiments with range requests and caching, we found that not only are range requests cacheable, but the browser will actually rewrite range queries to only fetch the remaining bytes that are not yet in its cache. This means that Browse Lite should not hurt caching while browsing. Finally, outside visual completeness, we enacted a real user study to verify the visual impact that Browse Lite has on pages. To do so, we took a sample of 50 pages from our study, stratified from pages of varying levels of visual completeness, and showed them to over 200 users. As seen through the snapshot of our study, we asked the users the question, how would you rate the quality of the compressed page, which can extend your mobile data plan? We then provided them a one to five scale from broken to very good. Not only did we include snapshot of browse light pages, but of Google web light pages as well. We found that while ratings were generally acceptable and in fact, very good for pages with progressive images, there is room for improvement, especially for the approximately 15% of pages that received poor ratings. As future work, we believe experimenting on more intelligent transformations of partial images at the client, such as using the context encoders of CVPR16, which can infer missing data of partially complete images, can help to produce better quality images for users while not requiring additional requests for data. In conclusion, today we presented BrowseLite, an image-centric data-saving methodology for modern web pages. I hope the discussion today has highlighted the importance of data savings on the web it can help to design future systems which count data savings as a first-class concern. Thank you.